zu unserem heutigen Special Event, zu unserer Pressekonferenz. Ich möchte gleich am Anfang noch mal darauf hinweisen, dass am 17.30 Uhr am äh, Transporterraum am Hol Hollywood, no, sorry, äh, Starship Hollywood Stand eine Präsentation stattfindet von CSC Video, ein Pressetalk. Da sind die Journalisten natürlich gerne noch äh, danach zu eingeladen. Ansonsten möchte ich Ihnen unsere Gäste von heute vorstellen. Auf der ganz linken Seite sitzt die Elke Sommer, nein Quatsch, Blödsinn, Elke Sümmel von CIC Video. Gleich daneben, gleich daneben die Esther Heyer von der Technischen Universität Berlin. Dritte von links ist Tina Ziegler, Chef, äh, Redakteurin für Unterhaltung bei Sat1. Und die weiteren Gäste brauche ich glaube ich nicht mehr vorzustellen. William Campbell. Marina Sertis. once 
I've never seen nasty children. I've never seen a bunch of drunks. I never heard a bunch of profanity. I never saw anyone deal with drugs. I mean, if, if Star Trek is part of that equation that prevents, that make, gives people some sort of, of uh, built-in morality or some, some way to go, then God bless it. Another point, when we went on a Star Trek cruise once, I remember going in the back of the ship, I was by myself, I was waiting for my wife uh, to arrive and to go to dinner or whatever, and there were four gentlemen dressed beautifully, sitting in a group. I thought they were from some other place, and I looked over and one of them smiled and said, hello, Mr. Campbell, I want to tell you we enjoy you, and I said, well, what the hell are four handsome guys like you doing? In a Star Trek convention, I found out that one was a doctor, one was a dentist, one was a lawyer, I forget what the other fellow was, but a businessman, and I was using the political, politically correct statement. I said, are you Trekkers? <laughs> they said, no, we're Trekkers. <laughs> Nowadays, the networks don't have the same power they used to have. So many shows, many series, as we all know up here, go and start out with syndication. It, you know what I mean by syndication, don't you? They're not on the main network shows. They start on local uh, channels, and they become trem tremendous successes. For instance, a show, a neighbor of mine, uh, Doug Schwartz, started a thing called Baywatch. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> And I thought he used to sit in front of our home and write this. We live by a lake. He would sit, sit by the lake and write this idea. And I thought, no way. No way can this go. Well, you know what happened to Baywatch. It's one of the biggest series in the world today. The biggest, I guess. All over the world. And, uh... I don't know why, just because I have those... Syndication now has become very, as you all know, very, very important. The networks do not have a stranglehold on what succeeds and what doesn't succeed. Uh, I'm di diverting a little from the idea of Star Trek, but Star Trek, my original idea, that in syndication it became a tremendous success. And since then, maybe they were a forerunner. Since then, we've had many series in syndication doing extremely well. Uh, what else can I say? I'm glad that I worked in it, and I'm glad they called us back. It surprised both Bill and myself. They would drag us out of the mothballs uh, to recreate our characters, the Klingons. And as, as it turned out, I, I, I have heard, and Bill has heard, that it was one of the better and more successful episodes of that series at the time, whether it was or not, we appreciated it, we liked it, and I'm very happy always to come back to playing uh, the K Kang and the Klingons. Thank you very much. I'm, I haven't heard of any other series or film that that has happened with. Do you have any thoughts on the subject? I think it happened with MASH, didn't it? Didn't MASH have, uh, yeah. like, MASH conventions kind of thing? Yeah. I think the biggest convention ever yeah. was a MASH convention. Yeah. There are other conventions. Of course, there's a, a Desi Lucy, Lucy convention all over the country. Now that, there's x -Bond. That's a difficult one because everybody looks like Lucille Ball and all the guys look like Desi. Then they have the honeymooners conventions, which are huge. Uh, there are a number of them. Elvis Presley has uh, something like 450 fan clubs, each fan club with over 4,000 people in it. I mean, it's unreal. Yeah. Remind them, too, that we had many, many Western conventions oh, for yeah. many, many years. Yeah. Bill and I, uh, 
I think we cut our teeth doing westerns, riding horses over the hills, fighting the Indians. I was one of the Indians that they fought. <laughs> uh, but they've had uh, many conventions for a long, long time. The Western Convention may be the very first convention we have. Yeah. The, the Western conventions are, are, are very much like a Star Trek convention. Um, usually when you're on a series, um, actors hire assistants. Um, I think I'm the only person on the next generation who doesn't have an assistant. Maybe it's because I'm cheap, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I like, I, I actually, no, it's because I like to do everything myself. I think once you start delegating your life to other people uh, and you're an actor, you lose sight of what reality is and what real people do in life. So um, I'm, I'm a housewife and um, I pay my bills and I go to the laundry, uh, the dry cleaners and I go to the supermarket and I cook with my husband and I take my animals to the vet. And you know, um, as I said yesterday, I have a very untidy husband, so 20 times a day I take his shoes off the coffee table and put them in his room, you know, in his music room and his closet. Um, I have a normal, I try as much as possible to have a normal life. Um, I answer my fan mail, you know, I mean there's so much to do um, when you do it all yourself and I think it's very important because I've met so many, so many actors, I mean obviously Someone like Patrick Stewart without, you know, he can't really lead a normal life. Um, if you saw me first thing in the morning, you wouldn't recognize me. And I'm sure, you know, you would walk past me and not even look twice. You would not know it was me. You say that you would, of course you would, you wouldn't. You know, especially because I wear contact lenses if I had my glasses on or whatever. There is no way you would recognize me. Patrick Stewart looks like Patrick Stewart. <laughs> so, he, you know, Tom Cruise, there's nothing they can do. They're limited as to how much of a real life they can lead. Um, however, I know Patrick does, you know, try and live as normal a life as possible. Um, it's very important. I meet so many Hollywood actors who have no idea. I'll tell you a story about a certain very famous Hollywood actress. And she and I, I'm not going to say who it is, she and I have the same accountant. And one day um, I was in his office and her assistant called and said, uh, she, uh, she, she's moving into her new house. She needs an electrician to turn the lights on. Find an electrician for her. So I said, well, why is she calling her accountant to find her an electrician? And um, he said, well, well, I'll find one, I'll find one. And he, and he told his secretary to find an electrician. So they found an electrician and he called back and he said, you know, the electrician will be there eight o'clock tomorrow morning. And she said, no, I want the electrician now. And I said, why doesn't she look in the telephone directory? Why doesn't she look in the yellow pages? And he said, oh, she's too famous. <laughs> and I said, so when you get famous, you get amnesia? Das war eigentlich ein ziemlicher Fehler, muss ich jetzt mal ganz ehrlich sagen. Äh